JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 22nd. I am Haralambos Pistoros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market uh, movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, uh, excuse me. Okay, here we are. Uh, the US dollar traded higher against all the other major currencies on Tuesday during the Asian session. Wednesday, it gained the most versus NZD, JPY, and AUD in that order, while it decked out uh, the least gains versus HF and CAT. Now, the strengthening of the US dollar and the Swiss franc combined with the weakening of the risk link Kiwi and Aussie suggests that uh, markets may have turned uh, to risk off. However, the relative strength in the loonie and the weakening of the yen point otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. There, we see that all but one of the major European indices traded in the green, with the exception being Spain's IBEX 35. In the US, appetite improved uh, more, with all three of Wall, of Wall Street's main indices gaining more than 2%. However, in our, in our opinion, this was a catch-up to Monday gains in other regions, as Wall Street stayed closed on the first day of the week. Today, in Asia, sentiment deteriorated. And once again, with uh, no clear catalyst behind the further gains in uh, stock markets, we would assume that this was due to last week's massive sell-off inviting bargain hunters into the game. And in our view, Asia saw participants reducing their risk exposure again due to the UK and Canada CPIs coming out, but as well as Fed Chair Powell's testimony, uh, which is scheduled uh, for later today. Anything suggesting more aggressive tightening and thereby adding to fears over a global recession may be and is negative for risk appetite. Now, the UK data for May is already out, with, headline, uh, with the headline CPI rate ticking up to 9.1% year-over-year from 9% as uh, expected, and the core one sliding to 5.9% from 6.2%, missing estimates of a slowdown to 6%. Last week, the Bank of England hiked interest rates by 25 basis points, as was widely anticipated, enhancing the notion that it will follow a slower rate hike path than most of the other major central banks. However, officials said that they are ready to act forcefully if deemed necessary, with market participants lifting their pricing up. They now see interest rates near 3% by year-end, expecting at least 50 basis points at each of the September and October meetings. Now, accelerating inflation may have added credence to that view, but we are reluctant to call for a trend reversal in the British pound. The Bank of England itself, uh, itself warned that the economy may have contracted in the second quarter, and thus more data revealing an ugly economic picture could uh, prompt market participants to scale back their hike bets, and thereby result in another round of selling in the British currency. The PMIs on Thursday may be of those releases. We get more inflation data for May later in the day, this time from Canada. Headline inflation is expected to have accelerated to 7.5% year-over-year from 6.8%, but the core rate is anticipated to have declined to 5.4% from 5.7%. At its latest gathering, the Bank of Canada hiked uh, by 50 basis points, its second double hike in a row, taking its benchmark rate to 1.5%. That said, this was largely anticipated and fully priced in. So, in our view, 
the most important takeaway from that uh, gathering was that the bank reiterated its willingness to act more forcefully if needed. Thus, accelerating inflation could add credence to that view and help the loony gain at the time of the release, even if the core rate declines somewhat. After all, even that rate remains well above the 2% midpoint of the Bank of Canada's target range of 1-3%. to now, later in the day, the spotlight is likely to turn to Fed Chair Powell's testimony. He is delivering his semi-annual testimony before Congress. Uh, it's a two-part testimony, one today and one tomorrow. The testimony is the same, but the difference may come on, um, on, the, question, on the questions he takes um, in the aftermath. Last week, in line with market pricing, the Fed raised interest rates by 75 basis points. The new dot plot was also very close to the path priced in by the financial community. The median dot for 2022 was at 3.4% up from 1.9%, which implies around another 175 basis points by the end of the year. In other words, as the market has been pricing in, another triple hike in July and two more doubles thereafter. However, at the press conference following the decision, Chair Power said that at the, next, uh, at the next meeting they may hike either by 50 or 75 basis points, depending on incoming data. In our view, this means that a 75 basis points liftoff is not a done deal, as the market pricing has been suggesting. Thus, with that in mind, we will monitor his testimony for hints, for hints and clues as to how likely a 75 basis points hike is at the next uh, meeting. The dollar could strengthen if he appears more confident on another triple hike, while the opposite may be true if he keeps highlighting the, the probability that 50 basis points could also be the case. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.